When a human femur was discovered along the Irtish River near Ust Ishim in western Siberia, it opened a rare genetic window into the deep past. This bone belonged to a man who lived around 45,000 years ago during a pivotal era in human prehistory, when anatomically modern humans had just emerged from Africa and were rapidly expanding across Eurasia. Known today as the Ust Ishim Man, he represents one of the oldest sequenced genomes of our species, and his genetic code offers extraordinary insight into the early encounters between Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and the diverse populations that would later evolve into modern Europeans, Asians, and Siberians. Originally, it was believed that his lineage went extinct, but a new study has found that the people in central Siberia today share up to 38% of his ancestry. This article explores Ust Ishim's genome, his Neanderthal ancestry, his place in the web of early human migrations, and how his ancient genetic legacy subtly echoes in the populations of present-day Siberia. It also expands on his relationship with another early Eurasian fossil, Tianyuan Man of China, and explores how these two men represent branches of the same initial radiation out of Africa that would later give rise to complex and divergent lineages, including the ancient North Eurasians, Kostenki and Sungir peoples of Russia, and Native Americans. The Ust Ishim Man lived around 45,000 years ago and was an anatomically modern Homo sapiens. He was not part of any known continuous lineage that survives today, but belonged to an early Eurasian population that had just begun to explore the vast lands beyond the Middle East. His bones were extremely well preserved, allowing for the first high-quality sequencing of a genome from a human of that age. This made Ust Ishim the oldest modern human ever sequenced in such detail, a record that stood for years. Though he left no direct descendants, his DNA provided scientists with a genetic time capsule, capturing a phase in human evolution that existed between two major events, the initial interbreeding with Neanderthals and the later divergence of Eurasian populations into distinct branches like Western Europeans, East Asians and Siberians. One of the most important findings from Ust Ishim's genome was his Neanderthal ancestry. Like all non-African humans today, he had around 2.3% Neanderthal DNA. However, what made his genome unique was the structure of that Neanderthal DNA. The segments were longer and more intact than those found in modern people, or even in younger ancient individuals like the Oase one specimen from Romania. That's because recombination breaks down long DNA fragments over generations, so the length of these segments can be used as a kind of molecular clock. In Ust Ishim's case, the Neanderthal DNA had only been partially recombined, suggesting that the interbreeding between his ancestors and Neanderthals occurred just 7,000 to 13,000 years before he lived, placing the event roughly 50,000 to 60,000 years ago. This confirms that the admixture likely happened in the Middle East, where early modern humans passed through as they left Africa. His Neanderthal ancestry represents a population-wide genetic inheritance, distinct from individuals like Oase I, who had a Neanderthal great-great-grandparent. Ust Ishim, by contrast, stands at the threshold of a new hybrid species, modern human in anatomy but carrying Neanderthal blood. To better understand Ust Ishim's place in history, we must compare him to another early human, the Tianyuan Man from China. Discovered near Beijing and dated to about 40,000 years ago, Tianyuan represents a separate branch of the early modern humans who entered Asia. Though he lived 5,000 years after Ust Ishim, he carried clear genetic markers that link him more closely to present-day East Asians and Native Americans than to Europeans. Genetic comparisons show that Tianyuan Man and Ust Ishim both belong to the first wave of Homo sapiens that swept across Eurasia. However, their lineages diverged early. Ust Ishim split off before the main Eurasian populations had differentiated into western and eastern branches. He is thus genetically basal to both Europeans and East Asians. Tianyuan, on the other hand, represents a more derived branch that was on its way to becoming East Asian. What is fascinating is that modern East Asians and some Native American populations share genetic links with Tianyuan Man. His ancestry is not entirely absent from modern humans the way Ust Ishim's is. 
This suggests that Tianyuan was part of a population that survived and contributed to later migrations. In contrast, Ust Ishim's group appears to have died out or been absorbed without leaving a continuous legacy, except perhaps indirectly through gene flow into East Asians and Siberians. Although Ust Ishim has no known direct descendants, some of his genetic signature has survived, particularly in modern Siberian and East Asian populations. A recent genome-wide study of modern Siberians found that they share about 38% of their ancestry with Ust Ishim's population. This is especially true for Eastern Siberians such as the Evenks, Evens, Yakuts, and Buryats. This does not mean they are descended from Ust Ishim himself, but rather from a closely related population that had not yet diverged into modern East Asians or Western Eurasians. These ancient Siberians also contributed genes to Native American populations, suggesting that the early Siberian landscape was a melting pot of basal Eurasian diversity. Western Siberians like the Kanti and Mansi also carry traces of this ancestry, along with a heavy dose of ancient North Eurasian DNA. These complex patterns of admixture show that early Siberians were not isolated, but formed the genetic crossroads of multiple lineages, some of which branched off toward Europe and others toward the Americas. The ancient North Eurasians represent another critical puzzle piece in understanding Ust Ishim's broader legacy. The ancient North Eurasian lineage is best represented by the 24,000-year-old Maltar boy and the 17,000-year-old Afontova Gora II individual, both found in central Siberia. These individuals lived thousands of years after Ust Ishim, but carried genetic elements from the same early population that had once included him. They also passed this DNA on to Native Americans and Western Eurasians, making them a crucial link between the upper Paleolithic Siberians and modern humans around the world. How does this relate to Ust Ishim? Genetic modelling shows that both East Asians and Siberians derive significant portions of their ancestry from a population closely related to Ust Ishim. Meanwhile, the ancient North Eurasian lineage that later influenced Native Americans and some Europeans inherited some of its DNA from this same early Siberian wave. In Europe, Upper Paleolithic individuals like those from Kostenki and Sungir, both found in Russia and dating to between 37,000 and 34,000 years ago, reveal further complexity. Kostenki 14 in particular shows both early European ancestry and traces of a basal Eurasian lineage not present in Ust Ishim. In contrast, Sungir individuals seem to have been part of a later wave that carried some mixture of Western and Siberian influences. These populations were beginning to differentiate, but the echoes of early Siberian and Ust Ishim like ancestors still resonated in their genomes. Tianyuan Man, on the other hand, shows no genetic links to these Western Eurasian individuals. His closest connections are to East Asians and, by extension, to the populations who would eventually populate the Americas. The Y chromosome of Ust Ishim originally appeared to belong to haplogroup K2 a basal clade from which many Eurasian male lineages descend. However, newer analysis places him more specifically in the N-O clade, a branch that would eventually split into haplogroup N, common in Siberians and Uralic-speaking Europeans, and haplogroup O, dominant in East Asia. This reclassification is important. It suggests that Ust Ishim was part of a male lineage that had already started to diverge toward East Eurasian populations. This also strengthens the connection between his genome and modern Siberians and East Asians. The presence of this clade in both ancient Siberia and modern populations supports the idea that Ust Ishim's people helped lay the genetic groundwork for lineages that would persist for tens of thousands of years. While we can only speculate about the daily life of Ust Ishim Man, his genome allows scientists to reconstruct elements of his physical appearance, especially his pigmentation, through analysis of key genetic variants associated with skin, eye and hair colour in modern humans, researchers have inferred that Ust Ishim likely had intermediate skin tone, dark hair and brown eyes. His skin colour was probably darker than that of most present-day Europeans, but lighter than that of sub-Saharan Africans. It would have been somewhere between tan and olive, optimized for moderate UV exposure in a northern environment. 
This supports the idea that light skin in Europeans evolved gradually and relatively late, well after the time of Ust Ishim. His eye color was brown, consistent with the ancestral condition for Homo sapiens, and his hair would have been black or very dark brown. These pigmentation genes resemble those found in many present-day Central and East Asian populations. Taken together, Ust Ishim's physical traits may have resembled those of modern Mongolian or Siberian indigenous peoples, with a relatively broad face, dark eyes, straight black hair, and a light to medium complexion, well suited to the cold steppe environment of Pleistocene Siberia. This intermediate pigmentation pattern also aligns with other early Upper Paleolithic individuals from Eurasia, such as the Tianyuan Man, who shows similar genetic signatures. It reminds us that the traits associated today with specific regions, such as light skin in Europe or lighter eyes, evolved under strong regional selection pressures well after the initial human dispersal into Eurasia. Ust Ishim thus represents an ancient pan-Eurasian form, not yet shaped by the specialized adaptations that would define later populations. Despite these enduring traces, Ust Ishim's own population did not survive as a distinct group. By 40,000 years ago, newer human lineages, some carrying DNA from populations like Tianyuan or the ancient North Eurasians, had moved across the continent. A major turnover may have occurred, possibly accelerated by environmental disasters like the Campanian Ignimbrite volcanic eruption, which blanketed parts of Eurasia in ash around 39,000 years ago. Populations like those of Kostenki, Sungir and Tianyuan were the survivors and rebuilders of the Eurasian gene pool. They gave rise to the recognizable branches of modern humans, yet they did so atop a deep substratum of earlier pioneers like Ust Ishim, whose genes, if not his name, lived on. Ust Ishim Man was not the founder of any current human population. His genome is a genetic ghost, once thought lost, now recovered through the miracle of modern science. He lived in the narrow corridor between Africa and the rest of the world. In that fragile moment, just after modern humans left the continent, but before they had become Chinese or Russian or French, his DNA tells us that our species was not a single line, but a web of branching, mixing and vanishing threads. He was part of the first wave into the heart of Eurasia, older than Kostenki, more Basel than Tianyuan, and nearly kin to the Neanderthals who still roamed the icy forests of the north. Though his own people may have disappeared, their presence still lingers in the blood of Siberian reindeer herders, in the genetic code of Native Americans, and in the deep structure of our own chromosomes. Ustishim reminds us that human history is not a straight line. It is a river of migrations filled with eddies, tributaries, and forgotten crossings.